So today we're going to go over section 3.3, which is future value of annuity. And uh, what is annuity? Annuity is any sequence of payments at equal time intervals is called annuity. So here we have again a kind of investment and we're making payments. For example, like um, if you have um, mortgage payment, car payments and stuff like that, where you're making payments every month, every year, you can have investments every year, every week, two weeks, whatever it is, set up the payments, but it's you have payments. Uh, and uh, in the compare with uh, compound interest and simple interest, where for compound and simple interest, you just invest your money and just get your amount, that's all. Here, it's a little more compli complex investments where you have payments, okay? So this is the formula to calculate the future value. So the future value is the PMT is the payments you're making, periodic payments is here. And then you have multiplied by the fraction of one plus R over N with exponent N T minus one, averaging over R times over N. Now R is the rate. See here you have the future value is FV, which is the amount. R is the interest rate as a decimal, always keep it as a decimal. N is the number of payments. So N is the same like if you talk about compound interest. N is one if you're making annually payments. N is two if you're making semi-annually payments. How many payments per year? If you're making monthly payments, N is gonna be 12. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. And T is the time in years. So make sure the time always have to be in years, that have to be in decimal, okay? And using this formula, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so Pleasure. how you using this formula? Thank you. We're using this formula, you're gonna just calculate whatever they ask him. And here in this question, it says, um, unless otherwise noted, we're gonna round the money to the nearest dollar, the percentage to decimal places, and the time to the nearest year. So we're just gonna keep that rounding rule. If it says something else, you're gonna use whatever it says, okay? So here we have number one. We're gonna do number one. It says, suppose you deposit 25 hundreds each year for 20 years in a saving account, pay 5% compound annually. So compound annually means I'm making payments every year. How much will be account uh, contain after 20 years? How much the future value did your account contribute? So here, what you need to do, uh, the deposit, these are the, the monthly payments. So this is the PMT, the payments. It's annually actually, not monthly. Um, for 20 years, so that's the time, 20 years. The rate is gonna be in decimal form, is gonna be 0 0.05 and So let's see, we have, what you have? We have to, how much is the future value? So the future value, just gonna follow the formula. So the future value is gonna be the payment, which is 25 hundreds, multiplied by fraction, and then I have one plus rate is 0 0.05 over annually. So N is one with exponent one times 20 minus one. And then 0 0.05 over one. Okay, so that's what you have. That's what you're gonna plug it in into symbol app. Okay, um, so how are you going to do that? You're going to plug it in. So I'm going to go to my symbol app and I'm going to put 2500. And you can just do fraction like this. And in the top, you have 
one plus 0 0.05 divided by one. I'm just gonna put it exactly the way it is. And then exponent one times 20 and then minus one over 0 0.05 over one, okay? So all this over one, you don't need to put it in, but I just put it like that so I can, when I need to change it, I'll change it. So this is what we have. Now it says around to the nearest dollar, so it's gonna be 82665. So this is how much 82665, because if you round after the decimal, it's eight, so it's gonna add one dollar. Okay, so everybody understand that? So this is how much you have in that account, right? After 20 years. Now, the question also is how much you actually contribute, what that means. That means how much you actually plug it in, right? How much money you put in that account. You actually contribute 2,500 every year. And when I multiply by 20 years, so we're gonna see how much we actually put in that account, right? So what is 2,500 times two is 5,000, 5, right? I'm oh, sorry, 2,500 times 20 years, it's 50,000, yeah. Okay. So what's happened? You actually put in that account 50,000, but you actually have a future value of 82,000. So the difference is kind of the interest you earn from that investment, okay? So that's what they're asking. That's the questions you need to answer for this one. This one and this one. How much you contribute is just multiplying what you are uh, put it in and multiplying by how many times you put it in. Okay, so that was number one. Any questions? No. Okay, going to the next one. And it says, if you could double only one of which of these, which will benefit you more. So here we're gonna use the same numbers, 2,500, 5% rate, 20 years, but they're asking the amount invested. So if you double, so you double only the amount. So instead of uh, paying 2,500, you're gonna pay 50,000. So um, we're gonna calculate the same, but you are changing the double in the amount. So that means the future value in this case is gonna be 5,000 and then the same, everything else is the same. Like that over 0 0.05 divided by one. So if I plug this in the calculator, let's see how much we're gonna get in the future value and how much did you actually contribute? So the contribution is gonna be 5,000 times 20. How many zeros? Four zeros, right? And one more like that, 100,000, okay? So this is how much you contribute, 100,000. And let's plug this in the calculator to see how much you're gonna get. So I'm changing, uh, just changing the 5,000, okay? So let's see how much uh, we're gonna have in the account. So it's gonna be 16, 165, and I'm gonna round to 30, right? Because after seven, after the decimal, it's seven. So it's gonna be, instead of 29, it's gonna be 30. So it's gonna be 165, 330. 
165,330. Okay, so this is how much you're going to have in the account after 20 years, 165,000, and you actually contribute 100,000. Okay, so let's calculate everything and let's, in the end, we're going to talk about which one is going to benefit you more. Okay, so right now we're calculating everything B, C, uh, and D. We have E. Okay, so the next you're going to um, <clears throat> kind of talk about which one is going to benefit you more. So we're talking about C where we're going to double the interest rate. So if you double your amount, this is what, these are the numbers you're going to get. If you double the interest rate, let's see what you're going to get. So here we're going to do the same formula. So we're going to use the future value. So it's going to stay with 2,500. But instead of 5% rate, we're going to use double it. We're going to use 10% rate. So let's see what's happening if you double your rate. So it's going to be 1 minus uh, 0.10. Oh, excuse me. One. It's, it's 1 plus. On that one, it's one plus. Did one. I put minus? It's a plus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, I use it right, but I just didn't put it here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's plus. What a, yeah. It's plus. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't know why I'm putting minus. Okay. Uh, here you go. Uh, then the exponent is uh, 1 times 20 minus 1 over 0.10 over 1. So this is what you're going to plug it in. And again, um, what is your contribution? You have multiplied 2,500 times 20 is also 50,000. So you contribute 50,000. And let's see how much you're going to get if you keep it 25. So this is going to be 20. Oops. 2,500. And then uh, we're going to change the rate to 0.1%. Okay, like that. So we're going to change that. The 5%, you're changing it to 1%. And in this case, we're going to get in the future value, you're going to have $143,187 because after seven, after the decimal is four, so we're just going to uh, keep it like $143,187. Okay, so this is what gonna get, you're going to get in the end of the investment. And then we're going to do one more of those, doubling the time now. Can okay. I say that one more time? Yes. You good? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to the next one where we have to double the time. So we're going to double the time now. So instead of 20 years, you're going to have 40 years. So the future value oops, is going to be, you're keeping the money, 2,500. And then you're going to have 5% is going to stay. with exponent one times. Now, instead of 20, I'm gonna have 40 years. And let's see what's gonna happen. Now, what is the contribution? If you invest 2,500 every year for 40 years, what one, you gonna get? 100,000. That's right, 100,000. Okay, now let's go ahead and plug the numbers 
into the calculator. So we're gonna keep that. Now, instead of, I'm gonna change that to 0.5%. And down here is gonna be 0.05%. And the 20 is gonna change to 40%, uh, 40 years. So when I do that, I'm gonna get, see what's happened here. $301,999. Okay. So now, <clears throat> write a short paragraph describing the results. So now let's analyze what's happened. So we have different numbers if you double it, right? So let's compare. So this is how you're gonna compare which one is benefit you the most, right? The most beneficial is gonna be the one which give you the more uh, interest, right? The, the difference. So what you need to do, you need to find the difference between um, what you invest and what you get, okay? So when I subtract 82, I'm gonna write it here. 82,665, when you subtract 50,000, what you're gonna get? Uh, you're gonna get 32,665. So this is gonna be kind of interest, that's what you're gonna accumulate without doing anything, right? Just using that type of investment. Okay, let's compare with B, what you get for B. Here you're gonna subtract again, 165 minus 100, so it's gonna be 65, 330, right? That's the difference. Okay, let's do the, so 65,000, so the first one was 32. Then when you double the investment, it's gonna get 65,000. And then here, when you double the rate, when you subtract 143 minus 50,000, it's gonna be what, 93,000, right? And 187. So it's gonna be 90,000 when you double your rate. And then what's happening if you double the time? So when you double the time, what you get? 301,999 minus 100,000. It's gonna be, oh, so obviously 201. So what do you think is the best one for you? Which one you're gonna get the most? The time. The time. So be very, um, I just wanna give you kind of life advice. Be very proactive, start investing, okay? Because the time is very powerful. The time is the only thing you have to invest. It's very important to use the time in your side, okay? because the time is gonna fly by and what you're doing with your time is very, very, very important, okay? So if you start investing now, don't, don't waste your time, invest it, invest your time. Doesn't matter how much you invest, doesn't, much, doesn't matter. I mean, it's important to have a good trade and all that, but the time you'll never get it back, okay? So use your time and start investing, okay? So that was number one. And then a uh, number two, it's pretty much similar. Uh, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, so pretty much, I'm not gonna do this, it's the same idea. So we did that already. Now let's go ahead and do number three. And in number three, we have Julia deposit 100 at the end of the each quarter for 20 years, the rate is given compound quarterly, which means every quarter, right? She's paying, she's making payments every quarter. How much is the account at the end of 20 years? How much she contributes to the account? How much interest? So it's exactly what we just did. So let's, let's just do this real quick. 
So for A, I need to find the future value in the account. And that's going to be, she deposits 100. So that's the payments, right? So this is the payment. Um, this is the time, 20 years. The rate, we're going to change it to decimal. So it's going to be 0 0.042. And then quarterly, that means N is 4. Okay, so that's what you're going to plug it in. So you have uh, one. Uh, wouldn't N be three because it's every four months? And so that'd be three times a year? No, quarterly means four times a year. There are four quarters in a month, in a year. Each quarter has three months, but there are four quarters. Okay, that's a good question. So be careful. If you're talking about quarters, there are four quarters. Okay. Um, then the rate is going to be 0 0.042 over 4 with exponent 4 times 20 years minus 1 over 0 0.042 over 4. So this is what we're going to plug it in. And let's see what you have. So here we have $100, right? Let me double check the numbers again. 142 and 4. And 20 years. Like that, right? Everything correct? We change all the numbers. And let's see how much Julia is going to have in the account. And we're around to the, to the whole number. So it's going to be $12,440. Okay. Now, uh, how much she actually contributes. So here she is paying $100. The contribution is $100 times four times a year times 20 years, right? 8,000. That's right. So it's going to be 8,000. So that's how much she contributes 8,000. So this is 12. 40. And how much interest she earns? So just subtract them. So it's going to be what? 4,440. Okay. Everybody understand that? Any questions? Any questions? So that's how you do these questions. That's how you do all this. And then let's see what else we have. We have another one, which is the same idea. Again, quarterly, so it's N is four again. So we're doing the same. T is four years. This is the payment 75. Um, the rate is gonna be 0 0.028. Quarterly means N is four and you're doing the same. So I'm not gonna do this absolutely the same way. Okay, number Okay, let's do number five. It's a little different here, just a little different. So here we have Mr. and Mrs. Lopez have a new son and decided to start account for his college education. They decide to put, so this is the payment, 100 each month, okay? So if each, each month, N is gonna be 12 months a year, right? Uh, the rate is 4%, so the rate is gonna be 0.04. Uh, compound monthly, so I need 12. 
Uh, they start this account when he was one year old and how much you have in 18 years old. So from one year to 18 years, what's gonna be the time? How many years? 17 years. 17, you subtract them, okay? So that's the only difference for this one. How much will be in the account? So that means you have to find uh, what you need to find. The future value, right? So we have payments a hundred dollars times. I need to change it in a minute. So we have one plus 0 0.04 over 12, the exponent 12 times 17 minus one. And let's see what you're going to get. Four. So this is 12. And this is 12. And the years are 17 years. And we have 0.4 and this is 12. Like that. Okay. I change all the numbers, right? And the son is going to have 29,149. Okay. So that's it. Any questions? You just use the formula, use the calculator and whatever you get. So that's all what you're doing. Okay. So let's see what else we have here. Number six is the same type of question. Um, so the payment is 150 each month. So N is gonna be also 12 months. The rate is gonna be 0 0.038. Uh, how much you count when she is 18. So in this time, the time is going to be 18. Because from sh when she's born to 18 years old. Okay. So you're doing the same, plug the numbers and see what you get. Okay. Not in new here. And then let's look at number seven. Number seven, we have... John and Sally like to pay a house in two years. Um, they decide to save 500 a month in account which pay 0.048%. Um, compound monthly, so N is gonna be 12. So here technically you have a lot of questions, right? And in the situation, it's a little different. So uh, John and Sally would like to buy a house in two years. So first they're saving money for down payment, right? So here we have two years. So they're asking for two years and then for... Um, it sounds like to me they're asking for four years. The two years is just something they put out there. So, uh, so let's see, they wanna buy the house for two years. In order to have the money for down payment, they decide to save 500 in account for 4.8% annual interest compound monthly, how much money they'll have at the end in the account at the end of the four years? I think it should be the two years here. 
in order to have the size how they like, John and Sally decide they need to save two more years if they continue to save two more years. Yeah, so this, are, this should be for two years. So these are two questions. If they, if they have it for two years, how much they'll have? Well, they actually are same, same for four years, right? So let's see. Or you can do both of those. You can find for two years and then you can find for four years. So let's do it. So the future value in, in their account is gonna be the payments of 500 a month one plus the rate is 0 0.048 over 12 because it's monthly payments 12 times uh, you can do two and then you can do four doesn't matter that's the only difference how many years they're gonna save so let's do that so I have 500.048 for two years, like that, right? Uh, for two years, monthly payments, 48%, 4.8%, yes, that's correct. And then we're gonna see how much they're gonna have in two years. So they're gonna have 12,000, 12, five, six, nine. So this is what they're gonna have for two years. And I'm gonna just change the four years. Just changing that two to four years. And let's see what they're gonna get in four years or two more years, doesn't matter how you say. So it's gonna be uh, 26,401. Okay, 26,401, okay? So that's what's happened here. If they have the savings for two, two years, they're gonna get 12,000 for down payment. And if you wanna save it for a bigger house, they need to, like if they do four years investment, they're gonna get 26,000, okay? So it's a little more than doubling the, the time, correct? Everybody understand that? Questions? Okay, so let's see what you have in number eight. So you have Mr. Johnson, decide when he is four years old to start saving for retirement. He begin depositing 200 a month in an account that pay 3.75%. So let me write the rate, 0 0.0375, that's the rate. Uh, compound monthly, so N is going to be 12 months a year she's going to pay. He's going to pay how much will be in the account if he retire when he's 60. So from 20 to 60, the time is going to be 20 years, right? Uh, and then they're asking me when he retires 65. So the time is going to be 25 years from 40, right? And when he retires 60, the time is going to, 70 is going to be 30 years. So these are the three different times you have to calculate, okay? So when you use 20 years, we're going to get the future value is going to be the payment is 200. And then you have one plus 0 0.0. 375 over 12 with exponent 12 times 20 years 
and everything uh, minus one and everything over 0 0.0375. This is zero over 12. So let's see what, how much he's gonna get for retirement. So we have uh, 200 and this is 375. And this is 375. It's monthly payments and it's gonna be 20 years. So just changing it into the formula that's gonna give us, um, so the number after the decimal is six. So instead of 29, it's gonna be 30, 71, 330. Okay, so that's for 20 years. Uh, let's calculate the next one for 25 years. So everything stayed the same. I'm just gonna change 20 to 25 into the calculator. See how easy it is when you have calculator, right? So we're gonna add one to the 90, so it's gonna be $91, so it's 99,191, right? 99,199. Okay, so that's the amount for 25 years. 191, is that what I put? Oh, no, it's 91. ninety nine one ninety nine. 91, okay, 99. Okay, so let's change it to 30 years and let's see what, how much Mr. Johnson is gonna have for 30 years. So just changing the number here, 25 change to 30. And we're gonna get, so here the number after the decimal is three. So we're just gonna at 88, so it's going to be 132.788. Okay, so that's what you have. That's the picture. That's if you start to only 200 a month for 20 years, you're going to have 70,000, 71,000, and 330 for. 25 years, they're gonna be 99,000. And for 30 years, five more years, is gonna be 40,000 more. Okay, so the money accumulated with the years, okay? So that was number eight. And we have, I think one more or two more. Yeah, we have two more. Let's go over the last two. So number nine, we have, um, in order to save, to have 60,000 in an account for their child's college education, how much couple need to deposit? So here, this is what they're gonna have. So this is the future value is given, not the payments. So how much they need to deposit? So we're asking for the deposit. So that's what you're looking for, the payments. Uh, each quarter. So if it's quarterly, N is going to be four quarters. Uh, the rate is going to be 0.05%. I mean, 0 0.05 in decimal, 5%. Um, so the couple begins saving when the child is five years old, so from five to 18. So what is the time? 13 years, right? We're gonna subtract 18 minus five. And that's gonna be the time. So here we have to solve for the payments. So we're gonna start with plugging in the numbers and then you're gonna plug, use the calculator, of course. So we have, um, so following the same formula. So we have 60,000 is the future value. And then the payments, I'm just going to use P, the payment. P 
PMT. I don't know why I put this. Okay, so we have uh, the payment. And then you're multiplying by the fraction. We have one plus the rate is 0 0.05 over four with exponent four times 13 minus one, 0 0.05 over four. Okay, so now here, what you're gonna do, we're gonna technically calculate we're gonna calculate all this fraction and then you're gonna divide 60,000 by whatever number you get. You're gonna divide both sides. And that's gonna be the payment. So technically I need to do 60,000 divided by whatever I get here. So you can do it different ways here. We can, um, let me write it everything together so it's easier to. So when you divide by fraction, you technically multiply by reciprocal. So we're going to do six in the calculator. We're going to plug it in 60,000 multiplying by reciprocal of this. So it's going to be 0 0.05 over 4 over 1 plus. 0 0.05 over 4 with exponent 4 times 13 minus 1. So this is what you're going to plug in the calculator. Okay? Okay, so we have 60,000 and then this is going to switch. So in the top, I'm going to have uh, 0 0.05 over 4. And then in the bottom, I'm going to have parentheses 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4 with exponent four times 13 and then minus one in the bottom. So careful when you plug it in, it have to look exactly the, the way you have it in the paper. So 0 0.05 over four should be in the top, 60,000 have to be in front and everything has to be formatted exactly like that. Okay, and then let's see how much they need to start making payments every quarter. So it's going to be $826. So that's how you do this. So this is a different type of uh, question where you have to find the payment. Okay, you know the future value and you need to find the payment. And then the next one, the last one is the same idea pretty much. A uh, couple need 80,000 for their child education, how much they need to deposit each quarter. So pretty much you have the same, absolutely the same question here. Yeah. So this is the, the future value um, each quarter. So that means N is gonna be four. If they give me, okay, so here we have the same question from the before. So the rate is gonna be the same 0 0.05 quarterly and um, so the, here we've got the time is going to be 18 years because we have um, we start the saving when the child is born so it's going to be from 0 to 18 years so pretty much that's what you have so the payment are going to be 80,000 times and here you have 0 0.05 over four in the top. And then you have one plus 0 0.05 over four 
with exponent 4 times 18 minus 1. So we're going to just change the 80,000 and, uh, and the years. It's going to be 18, 18 years. Oops. So everything else stays the same. It's a quarterly payment, 5% rate. Everything else stays the same. But now here, the savings, the deposits are going to be 692. So it's a little smaller deposit. Okay, so that's how you do those type of questions. And I'm going to stop. <laughs>